This is the third set of rear disc brakes I have grabbed out of a junkyard. And I just wanted to make a quick video on the best way to get these out successfully. And this is an ideal candidate. There is absolutely no rust on this thing whatsoever. The only rust here is pretty much the rotor. A little bit of the shield here and then maybe some parts on uh, uh, compensating arm there, the bushing. Uh, but other than that, this thing looks spectacular. And there's the matching set over there. So the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the rims, wheels, if they haven't already been removed. Next thing you want to do is you want to go inside the car and you want to disconnect the parking brake cable up here and then you want to push this rubber stopper out then you want to get under the car and work your way back disconnecting these attaching clips of the parking brake or emergency brake cable and to get these off usually they're behind the fuel tank uh, you can get them without dropping the tank, otherwise you can just take one fuel strap off at a time. If you're in a junkyard, the gas tank is already empty, so you could just take off both and take the whole tank out. It's really not necessary. Uh, use an open-end wrench. Don't use a ratcheting uh, box-end wrench, because you'll get yourself in trouble to where you won't be able to get it off, because uh, it'll be stuck, there won't be any clearance, and then you will have to drop the fuel tank. Uh, there's going to be a heat shield probably you're going to have to take off that's going to be between the body and the exhaust pipe in order to get to one of these straps and then you're going to want to pull the cable out once you get these two off and there's two on both of them and you don't need to do any more with that then you're going to want to work your way from the front to the back you're going to want to take this compensating bolt out of the compensating arm and then you're going to want to take out these two bolts from the rear trailing arm bushing. Then you're going to want to uh, disconnect the sway bar and then disconnect the uh, lower uh, control arm, the rear obviously. Uh, and uh, then you're going to want to uh, disconnect the strut bushing bolt. Uh, after that the only thing you should be left with is the two bolts holding the upper arm on and then the brake line. The brake line you're going to want to take the retaining clip off. You can just use uh, a couple of flathead screwdrivers or some pliers. I usually use a, uh, a small uh, pry bar and a flathead and that will usually get them out and then I use some Kleins or uh, electricians uh, now let's see here, I've got these let's see here. these are the Kleins and you use these to cut and crimp and then my pry bar is uh, part of this set and I use the little one with another flathead screwdriver uh, but you're going to take these and you're going to cut one of them and you're going to crimp the others and that ends up allowing you to take this out and you're not losing any brake fluid and the fluid is not spilling over your parts or in the back of your car uh, so it makes life uh, a lot better for yourself and then once that's done the only thing you got left are these two bolts and I would take off, break free both of the bolts and then take off whichever one is harder to take off if you can't spin it and you're in contact with the upper portion of the wheel well. And then the last bolt, stand back and just keep turning and turning until the whole arm drops. Uh, and you're going to want to, uh, if you've got ABS, you're going to want to cut that off. Then when you go to the other side, the first thing you want to do is take off the sway bar and put that to the side. Uh, and then work your way back up to the front again get inside actually you've already been inside the car and these have both been pushed through 
So now you're going to get up underneath the car on the other side, work your way back again for these two, and then the compensating arm, then the rear trailing arm bushings, and come back here, and it's your choice whether you want to do the strut or the lower control arm. Uh, the sway bar's already been removed. Then you're going to remove the retaining bracket again, and then you're going to cut uh, the uh, hard line and crimp it uh, again with your clines and that'll uh, shut this off to where you're not losing any fluid then undo the one bolt that's going to be the hardest and then stand up stand back and uh, take the last one off it drops off I got these out of there it took me a half an hour per side and the other good thing that I did was that I got there early in the morning and I worked on the side that the sun was shining on so that that was going to be the hardest sign side it was the coolest at the time so now once I'm done with this case it was the driver's side left side when I went over to the right side I already had uh, everything disconnected in the car I didn't have to go in the car and get hot and I didn't need to be in the sun anymore I was just on this side underneath the car and disconnecting these parts and I was in the shade the whole time so I ended it on a great note the other thing you want to do is get a couple of free tarps from Harbor Freight and these you lay down on so you're not getting in the sand and or in water or whatever it happens to be at the time luckily it was a dry but hot day uh, but you don't want all that dust and crap all over you so grab a couple tarps plus it'll this will save your uh, trunk if you have a nice car and it can cover your parts I left the wagon inside took all my tools out pulled my car up and then pulled the wagon out so that I didn't have to worry about somebody just loading up my parts and taking off because these scumbags will uh, and they'll even be coming around the car looking at you looking to see if you're gonna drop any tools or acting like they're taking parts off of a car next to you just to observe what you have to try to get you there was a guy trying to take an antenna off of the car he didn't want the antenna he was just walking around paying attention to me to act like he didn't speak English wanted to borrow a tool no fuck you you can't borrow any tools you know don't lend out your tools in the junkyard don't ever even strike up a conversation with the people give them a fucking evil eye and make sure that if anybody's walking around near you you gather your tools you keep them all in one spot I blocked off the doors I used uh, I ripped off the door handle on one side so you couldn't open the door from the outside I made it inaccessible as possible I grabbed a bunch of spare tires and rims stacked them up in between the two cars so people aren't going to come in there with their wheelbarrows have traffic through I blocked my side with my cart with the door open so they can't close the door my cart is pushing up against the door my parts are on top my tarp is underneath the car my tools are close to me on the tarp and I have pretty much control of a 360 area around me and if somebody's walking around I let them know that I see them and that they're not gonna fuck with me or take my tools so that's the best way in order to pull off uh, rear disc brake conversion for your car. The other thing is be in a state that uh, doesn't snow because otherwise this is going to look like crap and get it from a car that didn't come from up north and uh, hasn't been junked, get it from a car that hasn't been rear-ended, nothing's been bent. This was a automatic 99 Acura Integra that had uh, I think like 120,000 miles or so DC4 and was well maintained. I grabbed the seats out of it as well. The interior was in great shape. Uh, so that is my best advice on how to take one of these and deal with the uh, scumbag public.